Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is the Pest and Lawn Ginger, and today we're going to talk about mouse control. So guys, I'm in a part of town that uh, ends up getting high traffic areas for mice and rats and skunks and uh, a whole other whirlwind of problems. So I wanted to bring you through this service, kind of show you what I do for traditional mouse and rat control. You can see leading up to this property, we have a lot of concrete. And this side I'm not too concerned about, but once we come around the other side, we have a ton of vegetation. It's in an older part of town and it's a pencil lot. So it's very long, very thin. And on this side, you can see the vegetation is just kind of perfect. Now their backyard is kind of what we're mostly concerned about because this is where they're seeing the most activity. Now, just coming up here on the fence line is our first sign. You start seeing these little pellets of poop along the entire fence and it's pretty much everywhere start coming down here so I'm pretty positive that what we're dealing with is rats and our issue here is they like to climb the electrical poles and the trees and travel from house to house now one surprising thing is is just along the house just checking out all the barriers and we have this massive pile of poop and no that is not my four-year-old that did this uh, more than likely this is a raccoon and it's a big one at that uh, the customer doesn't really care about the raccoon as much as they want mouse control and you can see how dense this vegetation is along their back wall so there's a couple of things that we need to understand and I'm going to bring you through, but the point of this service is to repel them away from the house. And we don't have a ton of activity here in the back section. And this is kind of where I want to push them all to is over towards the neighboring property to make sure that these guys get what they want. But I set their expectations pretty clearly. This is not gonna be one of these services that we're gonna eradicate problems because of the dense vegetation and the population of this area. So the game plan is gonna be pretty simple. Uh, I wanna put a bait station about every 30 feet uh, along the south side wall. So that's gonna take care of about five bait stations for this size property. Not too concerned about the front yard. Uh, the front yard doesn't get as much activity because there's not as much of a food source as what they're finding in the backyard. Now, every time mice poop, it signifies a safe spot. So the one thing I don't want to do right now is I don't want to clean it up because I want them to feel nice and cozy and understand that they can come back and kind of nibble on this stuff. Rats and mice in a dense population like this can be stinkers to control. So we've got to be very choice on how we set up the traps, especially on a pencil lot like this. Here's my weapons of choice. I got the RBS Easy Clean. Now, I'm a big fan of the RBS Easy Clean. It's a real simple bait station. We'll open those up in a second so you can see them. We're gonna be using the final soft bait. This is one of my favorite baits right now. It's a soft bait, so it's not a block bait. Uh, it's gonna do much better in the heat. Uh, I've also got an attractant that I'm gonna be putting in uh, to get the mice into my bait from the station. Last but not least, the Repel X. It's a repellent uh, to push uh, mice, voles, gophers away from the structure. Now, there's a couple of things I wanna make you guys aware of. Now, in my region, uh, mice really don't like the smell of humans. Um, there's a lot of controversial topics about this and that it doesn't matter if you touch the, uh, the bait stations or not. What I can tell you is in my region, it makes a big difference. If your traps aren't working, one tip I like to give people is take some Windex, uh, clean the stations off. So I wanna make sure that I wear some gloves to make sure that I'm not touching the bait stations. Um, again, in other regions, it doesn't matter. I've gone over this with the suppliers. Um, I even called Bell Laboratories and they told me that, uh, that that wasn't the case. They've done study after study. What I can tell you is, is for customers that are having a rough time, we went back, cleaned the stations, and then all of a sudden they start working again. Now, the easy cleans are really nice. They're easy to use. They come with a lock, child resistant, child proof, uh, which is nice. 
and they come with these little posts I'm going to show you here in a minute. Um, each one of them comes with a key, which is also nice. And I'll just show you the inside here. Oops. So childproof and ginger can't get into it. <laughs> but as you can see here, they come with these posts. Pre-installed, make it really easy. We also have uh, just a little label here that we stick on here to make sure that when the technicians get here, they know when it, when it was put down. Now this is very important. I like to replenish these bait stations about every uh, 60 days or every 30 days, depending on the bait that I'm using. This final soft bait technically will last about nine months, uh, but I like to replenish uh, some of it every 60 days to make sure that it's working well. Um, simple, simple device. Mouse rat goes in here. They follow the channels, makes them feel nice and cozy at home. So it's really important that we set this up right. For this job, I felt like the Bell Laboratories Final Soft Bait is my bait of choice. Uh, a couple of reasons for this. Number one, it has everything on the label that I needed to do. Uh, rats, mice, meadow voles. Even though we don't have uh, voles on this property, it's a really popular thing in our region, so I'd rather have a bait that en encompasses everything that I need. Now, the one thing is, is instead of this being a bait block, this is a soft bait, and I'll kind of show you the difference in a minute. Uh, it's moisture encapsulated and when we've been having temperatures in the mid 90s to low hundreds this bait is not going to melt uh, and it's not going to get hyper oily to the point where uh, the rodents aren't going to want to take it. Uh, the biggest thing about this is is not only does it have an active kill ingredient it's got Lumatrec technology. Now that Lumatrec technology what it does is when the rodent eats it and they go out and defecate it leaves a marker behind that can be seen by a black light. So my technicians, um, myself, can come with a black light and kind of follow where the mice have been and it really shows us what's going on. Well, let's go ahead and open it up, guys. I can see, show you what I'm talking about. Now these come in what's called the sachet, not the dancing kind, but the food kind of food packet, which is fun to open these up. They can be a beast. Freshness and safety first. Now these packets are really nice. They're all sealed up so you can handle these with your hand. Has the active ingredient on the label already. Everything is posted. Now on the inside of these, you open it up, they have a hole in it. It makes it really easy just to pop it on in. And don't get me wrong, the mice are still gonna eat through this packet here to get to this, but you can see it's very doughy, it's not crumbly, and it's really good for the mouse, and they really, really like to eat it. But the one thing is, it's moisture encapsulated, so it's gonna last a lot longer and it's not gonna melt. Now the label here is really interesting. If you look at the rat section, it says to place six to 28 sachets at intervals of 15 to 30 feet. But then you get to the mouse section, it says place one sachet per placement and spaced eight to 12 feet. Three sachets may be needed at points of very high activity. So you go from a rat that you can place six to 28 down to one to three. Now my theory on this is, and I haven't talked to Belle about this is, but mice are nibblers. They do not like to sit and eat a whole meal, where rats will actually sit down and eat a ton at one time. Uh, plus you need to have enough smell in there to attract it. Uh, the rats are gonna be attracted towards large meals and the mice are gonna be attracted towards smaller meals. So the, about the only other thing that we're missing here, guys, is an attractant. Now, the bait is going to give us a lot of attraction here. Um, I personally like using this Bell product called Provoke. Uh, it works really well. It gets the mice into the box, and that's the whole point of this exercise. Now, one thing that you could do at home if you can't find a good attractant, because you don't have to use this one, is you could take peanut butter 
and we, we don't want to get crazy about this but we want to lace the outer edges of the entry points with the peanut butter oil so you don't want to cake the peanut butter on the point of the exercise isn't to feed them it's to attract them and that's one easy thing that you can do now one thing that's very important to know about mice is they, they like to hug the walls their butts their bellies on the walls so you want to make sure that these holes sit parallel to the wall at all times it's pretty simple but this is your general rule is you want to make sure that the holes are parallel to the wall now i'm kind of picky i like to make sure that the uh boxes aren't just commonly seen by the homeowner so I'm going to find really good spots in between the plants. Uh, here's my final walkthrough before we apply the repellent. If you come here, there's a station there, <laughs> which I've got these pretty concealed like if you didn't know they were there, you wouldn't see them, which is nice. And then coming across, we've got another one up under here. Coming all the way over here. Got it tucked up under there. In the backyard, it looks like I only have one that's super visible. We've got this station, and we've got that one at the end. Now, my final step is pretty simple it's just to apply a basic repellent. Now, I like to use uh, Repellix, two pounds per thousand. This house is gonna need about three pounds. Uh, pretty simple setup, comes with the scoop. I like to use my spiker spreader. So one thing I wanna make clear about the repellents is number one, it changes the taste of the grass and it, it makes it smell. It's got kind of a pungent smell that the mice and rats don't like. To you and I, it smells kind of like a pizzeria. It's just oil, garlic, and peppers. Pretty simple product. Um, it's not, it's not going to kill the rodent, it's just going to push them away from the area. I find that these products last anywhere between uh, three and six weeks at a time, so they have to be put down at intervals. Now, a one shot is not gonna do much. You have to do these things regularly for about three to six months to really see any long-term results. Now, it's been a lot of longitudinal studies where they just put it out there for a period of one to two months to see and it doesn't work. Well, this isn't one of those products that just works right off the bat. So you wanna make sure that you apply the Repel-X or the repellent so it pushes the rodents away from the structure. So you wanna start by applying it right off of the structure and then your next application will be 10 feet out. And your application after that will be 10 feet out, almost like an electronic fence. So having the bait stations out and the repellent out, it's a big step forward. Uh, now one thing I want to caution everybody at home, if you're in the same process, you need to make sure that the landscape debris is all cleaned out. You don't want to give the mice or the rats additional vegetation for nesting purposes. Now you also want to go around the exterior of the home. You want to start uh, plugging up holes. Uh, and areas of entry points that are easy access for the mice to come in, specifically around uh, like washer and dryer points and the ventilation exits. Uh, you wanna make sure that you seal those areas off and you can use expandable foam. Uh, we've used uh, wire mesh in the past. They do sell a caulk specific for mice. It's got little shards of uh, fiberglass in them that really just kind of mess up their teeth a little bit. So there's a couple of options out there. Now, the last thing you want to do is make sure that you build a site map and go to googlemaps.com, get that aerial view of your property and legitimately mark out every area that you place to bait station. Now, this is going to be important for not only recording the areas, but sometimes we get a little bit forgetful on where these stations are. Now, guys, I really appreciate your support. If you guys have any questions or comments, hit me up. I'd love to hear from you guys. Until next time, guys, it's the Pest and Lawn Ginger. We'll see ya.